novel profession and I want to impart knowledge to my students. Um, actually, I did not choose to become a teacher. I my first my BS degree is tourism, but when I was about to finish my college, I realized that I will miss school. But then again, I really have to work after graduation. So after graduation, I worked outside in the industry, but I missed school a lot. So I came back and I applied for my master's degree. And then I, I received this, I had an information that there is a position or teaching position available. So it was like, it's more of an accident thing, but Eventually, I learned how to, or to love teaching, and I guess it's really um, about the passion and commitment and love to first the university. I wanted to be to teach um, young minds, inspire them, mold them in the best that I can. I wanted to teach um, because, in a way, I wanted them to, to um, be prepared in their future endeavor, especially in the career that they will be pursuing. Um, I wanted to, to guide them and to, I wanted to teach because number one also it's my passion to, to share what I know, to be giving, um, to, ayun, maybe that's it. I inspire my students by relating the lessons to the field and to their uh, respective life. Hmm. It's really hard to motivate students nowadays, but I guess it's just a matter of um, showing them what and sharing with them what you really know, sharing it the right way, and be a model to them. And well, when we teaching has different strategies, and in the field of education, the first thing that a teacher should do is to motivate students before he or she starts to teach and to discuss the lesson. Um, well, I don't know, but I I hope that I I am and somehow an inspiration to my students and maybe sharing with them some of my experiences as a former tourism student and there. Well, in my lessons, because basically I'm teaching domestic tourism number one, all tourism students and travel management students must be um, aware of the major destinations, attractions that we have, our culture most especially, and it is a way of being a tourism ambassador for our country. In a way, we are contributing to our country. Now, I, I, I am able to motivate in the best that I can as well my students by um, sharing with them those um, destinations that I've been to, sharing with them my travel experiences, and at the same time researching also, um, getting the, um, the latest attractions, and also um, I, I was able, I think, to motivate them by helping them fall in love with our country, the Philippines, over and over. I see to it that I connect the lesson to their uh, field specialization and uh, to relate as much as possible to the present conditions or situations as students. Mm. Preparing for a certain lesson for me, um, since I've been in the university for quite some time, it, it is really not that um, difficult for me to prepare for my lesson anymore because I've been teaching these courses for almost 10 or more than 10 years now. So, with, um, I check my PowerPoint, I update it. And then I go through it before I normally that's the day before at least the day before my class so that I would know the flow of presentation although there are times really that um, 
um, I, there are tendencies for me to forget the last topic that I discussed, so maybe that's one thing that I have to improve. Okay, um, my preparations for my um, subject matter, especially for the lecture that I'll be um, giving for my students, would be number one, I do my research work. Um, I Before I prepare my PowerPoint presentation and my my lecture, I, I reflect first on um, what are the experiences that I had in the industry that I'd be able to relate as well to them so that I'd be able to substantiate the, the concepts, the principles, the theories that um, we have in the context and then be able to um, relate it in the real world, in the real setting and at the same time um, give the values that they need when they are already there. I resolved it by uh, tracing the probable route of development and uh, trying to uh, get the consensus of the students in trying to resolve the problem. It depends on what obstacle. If it's concerning the student, then I have to talk to the student um, here at the office, investigate about the problem or if there's anything, any concern or any issue. Now, if it's uh, well, uh, regarding the lesson, or let's say if the students have questions about their grades, then I just I, I always lay down my cards. I show all the records that I have to the students. But again, um, since I am in the office, I also work here in the office, at the dean's office. Most of the time, really. It's hard to, um, I experienced difficulties in, in balancing my time or managing my time also with the activities that I have to attend and teaching as well. So um, maybe those are some of the obstacles, but then I make it a point that I, whenever I teach, I hope that I give quality teaching to my students. Um, whenever I meet any obstacle or any challenges in the class, most especially during discussion or lecture, I just pause for a while first, ask the Holy Spirit on what, uh, on His anointing, um, if I will be um, uh, giving um, advice to my class or. Um, be able to have the presence of mind and guidance coming from the Lord to handle the situation. Um, after reflection and then um, proper perspective as well um, in a way that um, I, I think of the positive side of every situation or any challenge that I would encounter. I would be able to turn the negative ones into a positive one and um, into an approach that would be um, compassionate, more of a, a formation, having the values of com compassion, commitment, and competence, most, uh, the values.